Hey Chatterbox fam, I'm, I'm back in my Reddit box. This post is short and sweet from the Reddit domestic violence thread. I wanted to address this because it's a common issue that a lot of people have. I will not be posting the name of the OP for this thread. Please feel free to leave any feedback for the OP as well. But remember to be kind and helpful, okay? All right, let's get into it. The title of this post is, How to Let Go. So the OP says, part of me feels guilty, why? I am four weeks of no contact with my ex, but sometimes I wanna call him. How do I get that thought out of my head? I know that any conversation with him would not make me feel better. It's not good for me. And he doesn't actually care about me, but I just be wanting to call him and I hate myself because of it. Okay, so that's it. I told you it was short and sweet, but it's so common, right? So have you ever been through that? Have you ever craved somebody that wasn't good for you? Like sugar and you have diabetes? Tell me about it in the comments. What advice would you give OP? How did you get over it? Did you get over it? Are you still struggling? Leave that in the comments too. Here's my two cents, okay? First of all, OP, you shouldn't hate yourself for missing your partner. You're remembering that things weren't always bad. So it's natural for our minds to try to protect us, especially when we're feeling low, by highlighting moments that made us feel good. And dissociating from feelings that cause us unpleasant moments, like right now, you feel unpleasant, right? I've had clients who express interpersonal violence and domestic violence, and they found it almost impossible to remain separated from their partner. They had found new jobs, new lives, new everything, but they found it difficult to let go until we did this, right? And I'll tell you about that in a minute. The issue is they remembered those good times, you know, those makeup periods within the cycle of abuse, those good times that made you feel good after he made you feel real bad. They fell in love with those good times that were short and in between, right? To support them, I first validated their feelings without judgment, because guess what? Oh yeah, this is a judgment-free zone over here. I then challenged them to create a list of all the good things they remembered about their partner. I told them to focus on how their partner showed up for them in ways that didn't benefit their partner. We processed this and we put it in a list in chronological order and we grouped these kind acts in sets of three months. This approach allowed us to see a pattern of behaviors, especially during the beginning, in the last year or two of the relationship. Often these kind acts were abundant at the start due to the love bombing they experienced, but they slowly diminished over time. This pattern helped my clients to understand the reality of the state of their relationship. After processing these kind acts and talking about it and getting everything out on the table, I asked them to make a list of the negative experiences they've had in the relationship. We placed these in chronological order and we grouped them into three month sets. Comparing this list to the list of kind acts, it became evident that the negative experiences increased as the relationship progressed. Some clients noticed a change after 30 days, others after 90 days, and some didn't notice a change until almost a year. Various factors influenced their partner's behavior, including the client's support system, right? And how their partners were unable to isolate them in the very beginning. When placing these lists on top of each other, two pyramids became apparent. Kind acts were heavy at the beginning of the relationship, and negative experiences were heavy towards the end of the relationship. One major issue people face when deciding to leave an abusive partner is the fantastical version of their partner that they initially met. That was the representative, right? And that's the image that most people hold of their partner. They want their partner to get back to that. So they love them and love them and love them, hoping to magically change them. The reality of the matter is the abusive behavior overshadows the good times. And recognizing this is crucial for moving forward. You have to challenge thoughts against facts. This helps to demystify the magic moments in the relationship that makes the survivor want to keep going back to their abuser. This helps the survivor to also be grounded in the reality while acknowledging and validating their feelings, which can be two dichotomous things. If you are experiencing abuse within your relationship, or if you know someone that's experiencing abuse, or if you're a survivor of domestic violence, please seek support with the Domestic Violence Hotline. That's 1-800-799-7233. Seek counseling and make sure you tell someone what you're going through. Silence is violence. That's my two cents. Take it or leave it. It's free.